and welcome to another exciting adventure on the energy that surrounds us. I'm your host, Michael, joined tonight with my co-host, Michelle, who just waved for everybody in Radio Land. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. And uh, hey, Catherine, thanks for watching. And we are joined tonight by someone I am really glad we got to come on the show because she is incredible with her tours and everything. And so I will let our guest explain that. So without further ado, I give you Annette Lovano King. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here tonight. Um, I am the owner of Ghosts and Getaways, and with that, I create trips for people to join. Um, you know, over the years, I've had a, a paranormal group since 2011, and I always, you know, come across people that want to do this kind of thing, but just want to try it out. So I started this Ghosts and Getaways, so I just create trips, and we go as a group, and we have a great time, great time. <laughs> Sounds fun. Yes, and for the fans of the show, you actually seen Annette back when we were talking about the Myrtles Plantation, which was one of her getaways that she put together, which was an amazing trip. That was so much fun. It was so much fun. So is that when you went on with them, Michael, or did you go to a different one? I, I was with her on that one, and then I got to team up with her again. Was it Dylan Depot? And then you actually joined me when I went back to the Dylan Depot. Very wow. active. It was great, wasn't it? It was. Very cool. But so I wanted to bring you on, too, because I know a lot of people – when they hear like ghost and getaways, they figure, oh, you know, most tour companies do local. You actually do international. And so how do you set that? How do you go about with those locations? Well, <clears throat> so I, I first start off by, you know, taking suggestions from people in my, I have a Facebook group and, you know, I don't want to be the one that decides everything. I want to find out where people want to go. And that's what we do. So this year, um, actually coming up on Thursday, we're leaving for Transylvania. Oh, wow. So yeah, and I'm, I'm really excited about it. It's been a place that has been on my bucket list for forever. And, you know, with each trip, you know, I, I start out with finding out where do they want to go. Mm -hmm. um, and then like for Romania, you know, uh, we're going to actually be able to see, you know, Dracula's castle, we're going to go to the Hoya Bachu Haunted Forest. Oh, wow. You know, we try to hit the places that you read about and you dream about. Um, and I try to make it a reality while keeping it affordable. <laughs> so, you know, because these things are not cheap for the international. But, um, you know, last year uh, we did Salem. That was a lot of fun. Um, you know, I just try to do different places. So um, I'm thinking that I'll probably do it another big international trip, maybe in 2025. Kind of depends on the group um, and, and the demand. But, you know, um, and so maybe 2024 is going to be more of a domestic uh, trip kind of thing. But um, I reach out to different suppliers, tell them what I want, you know, approximate how many people are going to go. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want it too big, you know, I mean, I, I could have taken up to 30 people, but I didn't want to get to 30 people because I still want it to be somewhat intimate. Right. right. So 12 to 15 is kind of my comfort, <laughs> my comfort level. And so for this trip coming up, we're coming from all different cities. Um, I have some that are from San Antonio, Houston, and Austin. Um, and then I have some even from Alabama, some oh. people that are, they're not paranormal people but they found me and they were just interested. And that's the beauty of ghosts and getaways. I do have a private group where we do actual hardcore investigations, 
but this is more of the destination and not so much the investigation. Not that we won't investigate, but it's more about the destination. Right. Do you bring and, pictures and things with you when y'all go on those? Like you say, it's not investigation. It's more about a destination. But do you actually bring the machinery with you in case you want to pop it out? And how receptive are the places for that? We do take equipment. We try to kind of coordinate amongst the 10, 12, 15 of us because especially with international and going through security. Um, right. Oh, yeah. Know, that's batteries. <laughs> yeah. It gets a little complicated. <laughs> that and some of the equipment looks not quite so standard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we do take stuff. Um, we tend to scale down and not take as much, of course. Um, one of them is going to take body cams. That way it's a little easier. Um, but yeah, we, we still take equipment. We still, especially when we get to the Hoya Bachu forest, we definitely want to, you know, see what happens with our gear there. Um, when we do the domestic trips, um, like we had some, when we went to, um, to Pennhurst that actually drove all the way from Texas to Pennsylvania, you know, so when we do the domestic stuff, it's easier to get equipment from here to there. But, um, we we try to take something internationally for sure. Now what's interesting is I remember when you were setting up Romania, I was talking with you and I was like, and the forest that you mentioned is the forest that I saw on one of Josh Gates's shows. I think it was Expedition Unknown. Yep. And I was like, oh, you're going to Romania. You should check out the forest that has the square that no trees grow in. Yeah. And you were like, oh, I am. But I was like, oh, I was so jealous. In that <laughs> yeah. I, you know, it's just uh, we all watch and read about this stuff, right? And if I can make it happen, I'm going to definitely try my best. I can't guarantee I'll always be able to make, you know, some of those things happen. But um you know, when I leave this planet, I want to have tons of stories, <laughs> you know, exactly. I want to have lots of adventures. And, you know, with my husband passing away last summer, you know, it really reinforced the whole life is short right. kind of thing. And, yeah. you know, it's a little bittersweet because he was supposed to be on this trip with us. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he will just in a different way now. <laughs> right. But, um, yeah, you know, I just there's so many of us that want to do it. Why not come together, harness our energies, harness our, our, you know, our funding, and that way we can make it affordable for all of us that way, you know? I agree. And, you know, some of, the, some of the other places you said, like, you went to Ireland. Was that correct? Yeah. So that one was sort of a dry run. And one of my friends on the team she worked with a company to put that together. So it was kind of our first attempt at doing something like that. And it was really awesome because we actually had enough people. We had like 22 people. So we were able to rent out an entire castle for our group. And that oh, was, wow. Yeah, that was really awesome. She did a great job putting that together. Jackie Milligan, I'm not sure if you are if you know who she is. She lives down in Austin. But she was the one that was responsible for that trip. And it was amazing having an entire castle just to ourselves. Wow. Um, it was a Blackwater castle in uh, Castletown, Roche, Ireland. Yeah. And so that was sort of where, you know, we're like, well, let's just try this out and see what happens and then we'll move forward. <laughs> so do you have plans on going back or you're like, okay, I've done Ireland. So now let's pick another country. No, I would go back if, if there's enough people that want to do it, I would go back. I mean, I've been to Ireland now four times, so I'd go again. <laughs> you know, it's beautiful. So much history. I mean, you could pick any place in Europe for that matter. I mean, you know, right. so, uh, you know, the, at this point, I'm open to any suggestion. And even if we had a small group, if I could still make it happen and have it be affordable, I would do it. I would do it. Absolutely. I've always wanted to take one of those little things where you clamp them to the leaves and they make music and sounds. I've always wanted to take them to a haunted forest and like oh. and see if the trees would tell us a story. Like yes. I've always wanted to do that. So that would that's an that's a great idea. I hadn't even thought about that. <laughs> that's a great idea. I can hear the plants sometimes, especially on like really crisp nights. 
and just like in transitions of moons and stuff, I can hear this really low music and, and I just already know it's the trees. So I would just love to know, like in the, the what is it in Japanese, uh, the suicide forest or whatever, where everyone goes in, like, like, do those trees talk to those people that make them do that? Like, you know, can they hear a sound that like hits something in our brain that makes that happen? I mean, because I don't know, just the way that I can hear trees, what if these people can also hear stuff? I just always wondered if that had something to do with it. It's in forests. It's always seems to be in forests. I would think that we would hear, you would be able to hear something. I mean, why not? Right. So right. I mean, but I, do, I do wonder if something like that, that has that kind of energy in it, how it sounds different from other exactly. places. It has to, because when you go into um, like a, a battle area and this, the old trees are still there, you can feel that and you can still smell the gunpowder and you can still, all of those things still echo so much from those trees that I just can't imagine it couldn't. And did the first people who actually went into those forests that did kill themselves, was that actually the trees talking to them? And then people just started going there because that was, you know, what had it been known for. But the original people, you know, yeah. what was going on in there? Were they just walking through or what? But I would love to hear what the leaves have to say. So maybe you can add one of those to your investigation kits. And That's just, a great idea. Yeah. I'd love to know. Let me know. Yeah. I mean, we... I just got, I went to Vicksburg, Mississippi last month and going into the battleground, mm -hmm. I mean, I can feel a lot. So when I, it didn't take much to just instantly have this huge wave of energy and feeling. And so being able to hear it on top of that would be really profound. That's crazy. I know some of the old people in like Louisiana and stuff, they'll say the mud will burp words. Like when you get down in the swamp area, yeah. some They'll say you'll be sitting out and the mud will kind of let air out and you'll hear, like they swear you hear words like the old timers do. I always thought that was crazy. But That's they, cool. And they would burp words. And I was like, hmm. Huh. That's really interesting. I hadn't heard that, but I could completely understand that. Yeah. I could tell. <laughs> you know, uh -oh. Even when I was young, I was like, yeah, I get that. I'm still wrapping my mind around water burping. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> now those are two different things you know that but, no i know but i mean it's like the, the concept the thought of that it's like you know you don't think about that you see the bubbles and you just think oh, okay it's a fish or something you don't think oh the water is trying to tell me something yeah everything yeah. communicates So how long have you been it's doing this? Mud bubbling. Mud bubbling. Huh. Yeah, it's yeah, but they say it talks. Some oh. of the old timers. Well, so um, I've been creating trips and investigations for the group ever since I I started it back in 2011. Okay. But as far as opening it up to public, mm -hmm. that's only been in the last few years. Right. I that think was, it's a, it's a great idea. And it it was I started out slow with it because. You know, when it's with people you know, you trust, that's one thing. But you start bringing in people you don't know, and then that just changes the dynamic. And um, I created the, the, the Facebook group so that I have an opportunity to see interactions with them, between them and other people. Because um, yeah. the last thing I need is, you know, a bunch of people coming in thinking they're going to just drink and party and stay in some haunted place over the weekend, <laughs> you know. <laughs> because I do leave these places with my reputation, you know, I have a, have a great reputation with every place we've ever been. I want to keep that because I want to be able to take people back again, you know? Right. Um, and, you know, yeah. I, so I have to be cautious with the places I set up, how I do it, when, where, all of that. Um, when we did the Ireland thing years ago, um, it was a, it was an air and, and castle package and then everything else we piecemealed it on our own. This time with Romania, I did it a little different um, just to see if it was a better option. And this time we each handled our own air, but instead of staying in one place and then going out day to day, 
um, we're actually gonna we're, we're gonna stay in Bucharest two nights, and then we have a driver and a guide and a photographer that goes with us the whole week nice. from city to city. And and so I was gonna try it this way, you know, it includes dinner, like two or three dinners. It includes breakfast every morning. I wanted to put more of it together, right. more inclusion, more inclusions. Um, yeah, just for the value add so that, okay, well then if you know you have your breakfast handled every day, then that's a little bit less money you have to you know bring with you. And if all the transportation's figured in, that's one less thing you have to worry about, you know, and even the tours themselves are included. Wow. Um, so, you know, it's just, you know, I'm mean, I, and everyone seems really excited with that this time. So if it works out well, then this might be the way I move forward with future right. trips. Might yeah. have to come and do that. You need, be, yeah. Different. I haven't done one of those. So. Yeah. So the next one for 2025, as far as another big international trip, uh, I'm toying around with the idea of Scotland. Oh, oh yeah. You know. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we're both Again. we're both a lot of Scottish. We're both oh oh, oh yeah. See, I yeah. haven't been there yet, so I, it's yeah. definitely on my list. And I was thinking about doing a Scotland England thing. Oh yeah, and yeah. then actually going out and investigating the ancient Ram Inn. Very nice. So I have friends that investigate there. Really, and I bet you they have an amazing time. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you know, I'm just I'm having a harder time finding places in Scotland that we could actually in, like spend the night and investigate. That's right. not like way out in the middle of nowhere. Um, yeah, that, I'm, I'm still working on it. Yeah. Yeah. I can, and, hmm? Go ahead, go ahead Michelle. <laughs> I, was gonna say, I could look through my genealogy and see if I can find some places. Cause I just got registered uh, about seven years ago uh, under our name in Scotland for my family. So uh, they sent me a nice little packet of, things in Scotland and stuff like that for the Frasers. So that was pretty exciting. But I can see if they have some like things that correlate. And, oh, that'd and be great. Oh, yeah. Well, Catherine, I think I think you're in my Facebook group. And if you are, then you'll definitely find out about the next trip. So and mm -hmm. if you're not in my group, you can find it under Ghosts and Getaways. I have a public page as well as a group page. And so you'll find it either way. But that's where you want to be to find out about the next trip any trips, you know, international or domestic. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Now I find it interesting that you booked a photographer because I'm wondering, you know, with him, you know, or her, you know, being professional, will they send all the photos or will they say, Oh, these are the only ones that turned out in which case you may be missing evidence because they're not like we are going, oh, if a picture didn't turn out, that's even better. I'm sure, than the I'm sure whoever it is gives them the raw and then edited ones of the people. That's how I would do it. Well, I think what they're going to do is send me all the digital, like all digital and all raw. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. that's good. Yeah. yeah. I hope so, because like, you know, there are times like we'll see a picture and there's something blurred in the image and we realize that's something. Yeah, that, that's not, you know, we want that. And somebody who's not a paranormal investigator will be like, oh, man, somebody got in the photo. I, I can't use this one. And it's like, no, no, we wanted that one. <laughs> you know, I don't know any photographers, even super Christian ones that don't believe in orbs in the pictures, because we know as photographers what a light differences or a reflection or something. I don't know of any of them that, that don't recognize orbs or say, oh, there's a little spirit right there in the pictures. So I think it's kind of common knowledge. That'd so be interesting to take a poll with photographers just to see how many believe in that. So Yeah. And well, and originally when I, I wasn't, I didn't have a photographer in the package, right. but what happened is when we added the Hoya Bachu Forest, Mm -hmm. um, I inquired about one because I'm in hardly any of the pictures. I'm always taking the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I wanted to have, you know, more than just what I take. Right. But then, then afterwards when they, and like, to add a photographer was just another couple hundred for the entire group. I mean, so when you wow. split, it up, oh, yeah, split it up over a dozen people, I mean, it was like 10 or $12 a person of a photographer. It was nothing. 
And and wow. so it just made sense. But then I was thinking about it later, like when we are at Dracula's castle, when we are in the forest, yeah. seeing it, hopefully things will show up in the pictures. And when I when I talk to them, I, I express that I want them all digital. I don't want them made pretty. Right. <laughs> you know, we want we want to see them raw. Right. So that's what I'm hoping for. So, um, yeah. And I've never done it with a photographer before. Yeah. I don't see why it wouldn't work out. I yeah. Mean, as long as I can yeah. do dark lighting, take photography in dark settings, then you should be good. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we'll just see what happens. <laughs> Well, and it'll be interesting, too, because like you were saying, you know, not being in the photos, but you may get, you know, action photo of, you know, every, something, you know, somebody hearing something and catching their face going, look, this is when somebody heard something. You can see by the expression that this was not what you would expect. And, you know, it's not something we would think to take a photo of. Right. 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 And yeah, so um, I'm really excited about it. And, you know, like I said, it, it, I, I don't see why it wouldn't work out to our advantage. I mean, more pictures for all of us to enjoy and have, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. for whatever reason. And then evidence wise, just another source of pictures. <laughs> that and you'll get that most sought after group photo that never happens. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just looking forward to it. Um, like I said, we leave Thursday. We get there Friday. Um, some of us are staying on after Romania, and we're going to Bulgaria. Um, Bulgaria, the border with Bulgaria is roughly 30, 30 or so miles from Bucharest. And since we're going that far and spending that much money on airfare, I try to see at least a couple of countries. And so I hired a, another van and driver to pick us up and take us to Bulgaria. <laughs> Wow. And there's a lot of medieval history there. Um, we're going to stay in Old Town in Plovdiv. And again, I don't have a photographer for that leg of it. No. Um, and there's only six of us for that part. The rest of the people were splitting off. Some of them are like one one couple. Um, they have an extended um, overnight in a layover in Paris. So they're going to be in Paris for a wow. night. Horrible, right? Yeah. <laughs> what a horrible layout. I know, right? The and so, suffering. I just feel so then, bad. Yeah, I mean, there's so many ways you can play this, you know, at the end of it. And so, some of them are going to stay in Bucharest a couple of days. I mean, it's just, yeah. So, um, uh, one of the other places that, if if it worked out, this would be the only other place that would come in front of Scotland at this point. And that would be going to Italy because I had found a company that will take you to Povelia during the day. Really? Yes. Huh. And if that, if that is legit, then I would want to do Povelia. I haven't found anybody that will do it at night and that's okay. I probably, I figured that probably wouldn't happen. No, but. it's off limits. Last I it's, heard. Yeah. That's the town you have to have the permit for, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Advance. Well, and there were, like before the pandemic, there were two or three companies that I had found, and then the pandemic happened, so never mind. Now, <laughs> post pandemic, I've only found one out of the three that still advertises going to Povelia. Wow. So I figure when I get back from Romania, I'm going to reach out to them and see if they're still functional, if they're still, you know, in business, and do they legally go to Povelia? <laughs> yeah. Right. If not, <laughs> in that back gate. Because if they do, mm -hmm. I mean, that would be. That would trump Scotland for me personally. Now, if the rest of the group wants to do Scotland first, and that's fine. But um, I've been to Italy, but I've only been to Rome and Naples. I never made it to the north. So, you know. I'm the opposite. I, I went to Rome, Florence, Pisa, Livorno, and I didn't oh. get to go to Naples. <laughs> nice, though. That's a, that, I mean, that's a nice itinerary you had there. <laughs> well, it was a cruise, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that one was a family trip. We went to we went to Ireland. Um, Rome was the second, and then we went to Athens. And of course, the history in Athens is insane. I mean, oh, I bet like, the vibrations there are insane. Like, I want to touch the Colosseum in Rome so much. Like, I just want to get near it because I just know it must pulsate. Like, it the has Vatican to walls. I I couldn't wait to touch the Vatican yeah. walls. Yeah. Did you get a? Did you get it? Did you get the zing? You that? Yeah. I mean. 
it was really kind of weird too because it it wasn't what I like I didn't know what to expect but it was unexpected but it was I mean it made me truly emotional yeah yeah I get that. Was, That's how I was. When were I was you even there. able to see the wall? Because when I was there, there were lines all the way around into the city. And it was like, we were like, what are these people lined up for? And they're like, to go in the Vatican. <laughs> and I was like, really? And this is the thing that surprised me. You could wait in line from the morning and not get in at night. And they don't refund your money if you're if you bought a ticket to go that day. I was like, I found that really it's crazy. disturbing that you, even though you have a ticket, you're not guaranteed to go in to the Vatican. Well, when I, when I booked, so my dad just got back from Italy and I booked his trip for the, with, for them. And I told him, you cannot just walk up and get in there. It's just not going to happen. You know, you right. have to plan ahead for that. So yeah, I, I tell everybody. And, I, and when I have people that reach out for me to book them, I, I, you know, it's a little more to get, you know, confirmed, skip the line, walk right in tours, but it's absolutely worth a few extra dollars for that. Right. And Catherine, you definitely need to join us because we have so much fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you said you had your passport, so let's do it. <laughs> yeah, and you're going to Gettysburg, right, soon? We're doing that in April, coming up. Yeah, and then I have the Stanley Hotel is right now I've got it planned for July. I don't have a firm weekend yet, but I'm thinking July. Um, and then I'm toying with the idea of a haunted Las Vegas in early October. So I can tell you anybody in Texas will join you gladly in July in Colorado. Yes. I mean, this summer was so brutal. Ugh. And oh, I thought, yeah. oh my gosh, next summer I need to definitely find a place to crash for a few weeks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I was thinking about Mackinac Island in Wisconsin because there's a lot of haunted history there, actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The Great so Lakes, I, anywhere on the Great Lakes, you'll mm -hmm. get. So I thought lots maybe, of... maybe next summer my kid and I will just, I'll work from there. I'll just go for a couple weeks, get an Airbnb. A lot of my trips that I take outside of the group are scouting expeditions. That was the whole Vicksburg thing. I stayed at three different mansions that are now B&Bs. Mm -hmm. um, that way, when I plan one for the group, I've been there. I've talked to the people. They, they know what we're going for. Um, I stayed at, oh, um, Gosh, what was the name of the first one? I stayed at Oak Hall Bed and Breakfast, and then I stayed at Duff Green, of course. Um, gosh, the first one just slipped, slipped my mind. Um, but for anyone that watches my page, you know, I tend to, I try to travel at least one week in a month. Sometimes I make it out too. Depends on time and money and the job and the kid and the family and everything else. <laughs> you know, life gets right. in the way sometimes. But, um, you know, I, I'm kind of thinking now that I might just turn these scouting expeditions into like mini road trips for the group too. I mean, right. If anybody wants to just tag along for a weekend and check it out, let's go. <laughs> so, yeah. and I used to do day trips out to different ghost towns just to, you know, figure those out and, you know, but I've kind of hit all the ones that are close enough for a day trip. <laughs> and so now it's going to be more of a road trip. For some of those ghost towns. Towns. What's that? Like how do you find ghost towns? Well, so I research a lot. I go through a lot of the historical commissions. Um, you know, there's a lot of um, blogs and stuff that if I just Google ghost towns, I come across a bunch. And then some of them I just completely find by accident. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Each state actually has a list of ghost towns in their states. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's, I don't know, I don't remember who puts that one together but it's a really good i mean i don't know that it's you know a comprehensive list i don't know that it's maintained i don't know it might be maintained i don't know but um there have been places that i've found that weren't on there so i kind of feel like there's just so many still out there that haven't been discovered there's countless you know countless right. ghost towns so i'm just focused on texas at this point although if we do the haunted las vegas um, there is one outside of Las Vegas that I figured I'd go check it out, but 
you know, there's just so many. I, I just don't have enough time and money <laughs> to do all the things I want to do. <laughs> right. And it's interesting, too, when you read, like, the state ghost towns, the when we hear the term ghost town, we're thinking an abandoned city mm -hmm. and, or town. And when I was looking at the list, there was like five or six cities that were like, well, they still have a population of 100 to 200 people. I'm like, well, if they're populated, how are they a ghost town? That's true. That is very true. And I'm not quite sure what the criteria is for that. But you're absolutely right. There are places um, that still have people living there. Now I've been to a few out here west of where I live and they had like five. <laughs> you know? right. But you know, there's a hundred people to me, that's not so much a ghost town, but right. You know, right yeah. now the, the next one I have um, is in over Halloween and into day of the dead. And that's Terlingua down in West Texas. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I stopped one time to change a flat there. I will ride on the rim out of there next time. Really? Stay in. <laughs> Not I, love, I love that place. I love it. Um, my husband and I, before he passed, we went. We took our um, our oldest for her birthday, rented one of the bubbles. That was pretty cool, except that it rained, so we couldn't see any of the, any of the stars in Milky Way, whatever. <laughs> but... Last year, I went for the Day of the Dead Festival. It was emotional because he had just passed in July, and I had put his picture up on the altar. It was a really hard time, but I, I think he, I think he loved it. I mean, because he loved that place. Now going again, it's a little different. You know, I'm going to stay a Halloween night in Alpine at the Haunted Holland Hotel. Mm -hmm. After we spend a couple of nights in Terlingua, we're going to go to Marfa, and go check out the Marfa lights. I, I don't know what I think about that. <laughs> the Marfa lights. I don't know. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I'm it? interested to see your experience on that because yeah. I've I don't seen even them. know when they're like, when's the best time to see those. I'm not sure there's a, like a seasonal kind of thing. I, I think it's just luck of the draw, honestly. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. People who live there are just like any night. It could just happen any night. But I think it has to do something with the temperatures, doesn't it? Like it's just the way the light's hitting and the temperatures have to be just. You know, just I've seen right. so many different theories. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what to think about it. And no, if just, anybody in the chat has any experience out there, I'd love to hear about it because I just don't know what to expect. I mean, we may get out there and nothing happen, but it'll be fine anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think it's I mean, weird something i did not change my own tire before we get messages when people watch this she doesn't change tires i did not change it triple a changed it for me so now we're back i don't <laughs> want to get write-ups about you know you don't even know where to put gas in i do know where to put gas in. That's it. <laughs> anyway. so note to self when on a road trip with michelle okay. don't expect her to change a tire i have triple a and aarp so we're good well, I don't, I don't self change self. tires either, so don't feel bad. <laughs> That's hard work. Like, I have the four-way thing and everything. Oh, Dad's yeah. like, just do this. I'm like, what? I couldn't just do that. Anything Dad said, just do that, I could never just do that. <laughs> well, I have arthritis in my hands, so it's just not going to happen. <laughs> But that's okay. I just that I have a service I pay for too. You know that way if I have okay. to my like column. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I cover my deficiencies. Yes. Yeah. So you know, even the like the Terlingua trip. You know, mm -hmm. I open that up because we're not. I mean, you can investigate the ruins out there, right? But um, we didn't have enough people to run out the uh, Perry Mansion. Mm -hmm. So um, that was a cool place. I stayed there the last time, and you know the history and the alleged hauntings there. Um, the first time we went, we got super lucky. We were the only people in the entire place. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, wow. It, was, it was me, my husband, and my kid. So, and my husband was, he's like, oh, whatever, it's maybe hot. I don't know. He didn't really believe so much, <laughs> <laughs> but he was a good sport going on the trips with me. Um, and if we'd had enough people, then I would have rented the entire mansion, but it just wasn't cost effective if we didn't have enough people for all the rooms. All right. Yeah. So, but the ruins are, are wide open and nobody cares that you're out there. So, I mean, you can investigate day or night. It's great. Yeah. I'm curious with your site being active for so long and 
gaining such attention, do you have locations that will reach out to you and go, hey, have you ever thought about investigating our place here? I've had a few places that have reached out um, <clears throat> asking me if I wanted to come out and just visit so I could write about it, you know, things like that. And um, I'll do some of that for next year. I was already pretty much scheduled out for the rest of this year. And because um, with my regular job, this is my busy season, so I work a lot. And so I just couldn't, I didn't want to commit and then not be able to do it or not do a good job on it. So um, next spring, I'll probably do some of those places <clears throat> and, you know, hopefully kind of develop more relationships with some of the owners you know, to get some access to places that may not be easily accessible to other people. So right. I'm working on it. <laughs> no promises there, but I'm working on it. Well, I'm I have to say, I love the fact that you're being able to do that because a lot of people think to get access to some of these places, you got to be on TV, have a huge crew or super large YouTube following that people are like, oh, you're worth our time to come in. So most people won't even try. And here you are not not saying that you're not, you know. High up, you know, and but I'm not a show. I, yeah, but, I'm not a TV show. I don't have millions of followers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. yeah. And you're getting your foot in the door, so it's like it kind of is like hopeful for everyone to, you know, that your reputation leads and allows you access to where most people wouldn't. That's what right. I think is great. Building a path for everyone. <clears throat> Yeah. And, and that's why, you know, I invite people to join the group because again, you know, it's, it's not cost effective for three people to go and investigate, you know, Penhurst on their own. Right. I mean, unless you just want to drop that kind of money, mm -hmm. but if we can get enough of us together and <clears throat> I do for the investigations, I do try to keep them as small as possible, but yet still affordable. You know, the, the whole thing, like I, I know that, you know, there are tour companies out there and I won't mention them by name that, you know, take 30 people at a time, you know, and and you rotate out in shifts and stuff. And I mean, you can't do anything with that, but it's good for people that just want to say they were there, <laughs> you know, whatever. So, <clears throat> you know, when we did Penhurst, um, I think we had eight of us or something. Same thing for Eastern State. You know, we just try to keep it you know, 10 or less, if I can, like, the only thing that was really, really pricey was Trans Allegheny, goodness gracious, because even with 10 of us, we still paid 200 a piece. <laughs> yeah, because they make you get insurance and all that, and, right. and which I get it, I get it, um, but, you know, that one was a pricey one, but everybody was willing to pay it, so we did it, but, um, you know, I and, and a lot of the people that go have their own teams, I don't care, I'm, you know, I know there are some groups out there that, you know, if you're part of this one, you can't be part of another one. I am not that person. <laughs> you know, if you want to go take your own pictures and video, put it on. I mean, and yeah, why can't we work together? I don't I don't care if you have your own group. As long as you're respectful and it's mutual, like we can do this, <laughs> you know, right. absolutely. Yeah, and I, I agree. And I always feel like collaborating is, you know, better option because you learn techniques or anything that you know history wise or experiment wise or use of equipment wise that you normally wouldn't get and that i think is too is something you're pointing out that a lot of people don't think about is you know, when you're talking about the fame of some of these places, a lot of people will be like, yeah, I'm going to drop the money just because I want to say I was there. To whereas if you take a large group like 10, 20 people, it makes that large chum chunk of money a lot smaller. And we don't think about that a lot of times. We're like, oh, man, I can't afford that. And then it's like, well, yeah, you can if you do it right. <laughs> yeah, and <clears throat> and like Trans Allegheny, we could have taken twenty people. It's huge, it's mm -hmm. huge. You know, Waverly, you could take twenty people and split up. You know, it's big. 
um, other places, I wouldn't do it because it's just not big enough, you know. So it definitely depends on the size of the venue. Um, but <clears throat> so far, you know, for all the years that I've been doing this for the for the team and now for the group, I mean, we've had nothing but great experiences. We may not have a lot of activity, right. but we come back with some really funny stories, <laughs> you know, and you really like with this group going to Romania, um, four or five of them, we've traveled extensively together over the years. I mean, you're almost family at some point, you know, and we got right. a few others that are newer and like the couple from Alabama that we don't really know, but you know, I, I mean, yeah, it, it's so it's it's more than just, at least for me, setting these things up. It's more than just going ghost hunting. You know, it is about learning the history, you know, and in, in this particular case, going international, learning about the culture, trying new things. You know, it's there's just so much more to it than just looking for the spirit activity. Definitely a full rounded mm -hmm. activity. It's just like you get a to encompass so many different things. That's it's very unique. I, I'm just really admire it. It's really yeah, good. E even something like Salem, you know, we went, we flew into Boston, stayed there. We spent the night at Lizzie Borden, you know, again, learning about the local stuff. Um, yeah, it's cool to say we stayed at Lizzie Borden, but yeah, you know, there's just, yeah. And, and for a lot of people that are really into traveling, yes. um, you know, the paranormal part is almost secondary for some of them. <laughs> <laughs> right i'd be happy just to get to ireland or scotland paranormal would just be like icing on the cake <laughs> but i mean yeah and, and if i can find a castle that you know is small enough that we could rent it for our group for just us i'm all about it yeah i mean the one we stayed in had been seized by cromwell i mean when you think about that kind of history it's just really cool <laughs> you know I need to think that <clears throat> yeah so where other places would you want to go besides Scotland or, I mean, I know, I know you've been to a lot of places, Michael, but um, are there any others you would think about? And then Michelle, I want to hear from you too. I'll let Michelle go first. Um, I'm kind of a big chicken, so I don't really go like ghost hunting. They just kind of hunt me. So that's kind of hard, but there is a, when I worked in Shreveport, there's a old music venue there right by a cemetery. I came across it looking going to get the kids shots or something. And it has a statue. Remember Michelle Carla said um, she knew the name of it. Yes, that we had, but um, I would like to go in there, but even the cops won't go down in that area because oh, wow. such a high crime rate. And, and it's just the, the ghost, they're scared of the ghost because there's this really scary cemetery and I'm even scared of that cemetery and then that venue, but that venue has got to have so much energy. Like I would like to go there. Other than that, everything else scares me, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, what about you? So I was thinking about it. So international, I would say addition would be Germany because I have a German last name, so ancestry there. And Holland area, some of those that smaller area. And domestic. Actually, ironically, Louisiana with the Battle of New Orleans, I think so many people forget about that and how, you know, the stories there and the legends to go there and see, did the legends true, what really happened or, you know, what did happen and how much is fact versus make you know, made up to embellish the story. Yeah. I mean, I'll be honest. I kind of forget about battle of new Orleans, you know, yeah. um, we've been to Louisiana quite a few times this year. I'm not quite sure. Louisiana, Oklahoma. It's funny. I hadn't been there in years and then now we've been like four times, but, um, you know, that's a place I need to really kind of look at, um, here lately with Louisiana, with Oklahoma rather, I took my parents uh, to Oklahoma City. They wanted to go there for the memorial. And there were so many other places when I was researching just all over Oklahoma that people die, you don't even, I've never even heard of. And then I start to dig in and there's a lot of cool history. So 
I feel like there's so much untapped stuff out there, but yeah. it just takes the time to sit down and research it. <laughs> and and what's interesting it. is my parents and I, when we would, you know, being from up north, we would travel back, you know, through Illinois and we would pass through Cahokia and visit these mounds. And, you know, just walking, you know, through the mounds, you know, and learning the culture and everything. And it was like a little fun, little, you know, getting out and stretching from the car ride and, you know, walking through beautiful land. And now I found out there's paranormal activity there. And so I'm like, why couldn't you tell me this when I was there? <laughs> Why do you tell me now when I have no reason to go to Illinois <laughs> to where I can make the stop <laughs> over and, you know, quickly stop by and investigate? Yeah. Yeah. There's a, there's places on, a, on the way back I, I find out about my like, crap. I was just there. <laughs> I totally missed it. Yeah. One of the places that I did get to see in Mississippi that I was glad to see it was... Um, the the grocery store where the Emmett Till incident all happened, where uh -huh. he he was alleged to have flirted with a white woman and whatever. Wow, that and, mom, she was a beast. Oh yeah, and and so the grocery store is barely standing. It's really? in ruins. Yeah, and wow. they were trying. There was a group that was trying to save it and to be a, a memorial for Emmett Till, right. and they've got a big sign out there, but. The trees have overgrown so much, you could drive by it and never know that building was behind the trees. Wow. Mm -hmm. So did you find the address from like the old newspaper clippings from when it came out? Because I think they wrote the address for the store in the actual article, if I remember it right, when I read it. Yeah. So they did have some copies of the articles, images of it posted at, at the Civil Rights Museum in Jackson. Oh, okay. And so I hadn't even thought about going out to that place. And then I saw that article and I got my phone out and I'm like, oh, that's just an hour from here. Well, yeah. hell. So we're my, I grabbed my kid and we took off. I'm like, I'm going to go check it out now. <laughs> Don't tell a text in an hour. We're like, I can see, let's go. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, it's called Bryant Grocery. And oh, wow. it's just, it's, I still felt, the tragedy out there. I, I can oh, still yeah. feel it. Um, God, what a horrible story. I'm so glad they made the movie about it and finally brought it to light because it was kind of forgotten about. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't learn about it in school. I learned about it in California when I was out there as a young adult. So, I mean, I'm glad it's out there. It made me admire his mother more than ever. What a woman. What a what woman. She went through, um, you know, I mean, of course, obviously Emmett, you know, oh. his, you know, it was so, so unfair and Baby. they're, mm -hmm. I mean, they're animals. They're just animals. Right. And, and so to, you know, to, to know what her, his mother went through and his family and, you know, and how they, they took that experience and moved forward with the civil rights movement. I just admired that woman, you know, and I can imagine looking at the newspaper and seeing your son, that um, that baby was just beat so bad. Oh, yeah. And the museum, the Civil Rights Museum, is amazing. I mean, the way they set it up. Mm -hmm. I mean, it takes you right through all the hard times, but then when you go through it in chronological order, you come out at least feeling better about the world again. <laughs> you know. Oh. And oh. go ahead. Oh, I think that's fascinating. That you come yeah. out feeling better. Yeah, I mean, they don't focus only on the horrible parts. Oh, okay. but um, they have a, a jail cell in there set up, and they had videos playing along different exhibits. And one of the ones that really, really touched me was during um, the wars, various wars. They had uh, recordings from black soldiers. And when they had the German POWs here from World War II, they had them out working the fields as well. Mm -hmm. And, but some of the recordings, they said they treated the POWs better 
than they treated the black soldiers. Man. And that's really, that was a painful thought for me that they served our country and they still weren't given respect as much as these enemy POWs that we had. They're trying to kill us. Yeah. 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 And so um, the energy from the artifacts that were there, you feel it. Yeah. You absolutely feel it. You know, I mean, little known fact that, you know, the fact that they made those Nazi POWs work next to the African Americans, that was an insult to the Nazis mm -hmm. because they viewed if you had an African American soldier captured by the Nazis, they did not normally take them prisoners. They were like, nope, you're not worth our time. We're just going to leave you here. You're done. There, there was yeah. like no mercy for them. They, they viewed them as subpar. Yeah, and and the columns in the museum, from ceiling to floor, um, have names and dates of all of these people that were lynched. And so when you and I kept and I looked, I mean, then column after column, and I'm like, it just really gets you in the heart, you know. Um, and at the grocery store, like I wonder. Yeah. You know, any any energies that are remaining there, you know, any hauntings that are there, because like I said, just getting there, getting out of the car, mm -hmm. the first thing I felt was tragic. That was the first thing that hit me. You that's, know, that's a mm -hmm. hard feeling. When and there are there are some little homes around it. So I wonder what they experience there. Yeah. At different times. Um, right. So, mm -hmm. you know, even though we were there for Vicksburg, um, you know, we didn't, of course, I didn't investigate at the grocery store. I didn't want to, I wasn't going to do that. Um, but yeah. it was, it was at that point, it was about the history more than anything else. Mm -hmm. And because that building will probably come down sooner rather than later, I wanted to say it. The, there's the, the four walls are still standing, but barely, there's no roof or anything. Oh, wow. It's just caving in. There's trees growing in and out of it. I mean, it's, it's just in bad shape and it's unfortunate that, they couldn't get the funding to maintain it and set it up as a, as a monument, you know, but wow. yeah. Those so, trees are probably the only thing holding those walls up. Yeah. And it's funny cause you can see you, there's like really buried in the trees uh, on the wall. You can see some signs and stuff, but you can barely oh. make them out. Yeah. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. So Mississippi really got to me this year. And so I, I want to go back. It was Anchuca Mansion was the first one we stayed in. Um, I do recommend Duff Green. That that place, of course, I mean, that comes up a lot in some of the, you know, paranormal blogs and things. But gorgeous, gorgeous place. And um, they still have, in one of the rooms, damage from a cannonball that they've covered with glass and stuff but that way you can see where the cannonball came from oh, cool. to like just hit the plaster and the plaster's all like caved yeah in. i mean it's just it's, at the, it's in the roof and they just covered it with glass so you can see it That's but cool. and when you i did the ghost tour in vicksburg and he pointed out houses the damage that you can still see on a couple of the old homes and then one of them had this beautiful, big, massive gate, and it was dented in. And he said, that's from a cannonball. <laughs> so, you know, but I, I love that those owners didn't fix it. Yeah. They're like, how cool. I had a cannonball through my gate. Look. And that's, how, that's how Gettysburg is when we went the first time. Yeah. You can see damage in some of the buildings. They, they left it there, which is awesome. They haven't well, been and even before. still is some of them like, a lot of the battlefields they said they went to get it out but you really can't because you don't know if that ball still has any active element to it to where if you were to hit it to knock it free you might cause a secondary because you don't know if it exploded on impact the charge in it or if the charge is still sitting there oh gosh that's something to think about <laughs> about the ball actually having a charge. I thought it was like a combustion thing or a blow up thing from the gunpowder. And then the ball just shot through. The ball has something in it? Well, some of the balls had lit charges on them and some were lead balls. And so. Oh, okay. I'm thinking of only the lead ball ones, not the ones where you light and shoot. 
Yeah, the like the mortar shots, those are a charge. And no. so that's why you would see, like, in the movies when they sh or in like pictures, mm -hmm. you would see like the pattern where they're down is like sprayed outward, is the ball exploded in midair. Huh. And I that's what caused the damage. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. Now I've got to go back and think of all the places I've been and go, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, it's just fascinating. So, you know, I'm working on the calendar for next year and just trying to find some places that would be interesting beyond just the paranormal aspect. Right. Yeah. That's cool. Well, surprisingly enough, we are approaching the end of the hour. That was fast. That was yeah. fast. <laughs> Let's we'll do it again. This is fun. So, here's the link I, uh, I put up in the chat room. And some of the active spots and up on screen is the Facebook address that I got for your group. So people can find it that we were talking about ghost and getaways. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a lot of fun and get to meet new people and learn new things and make some new friends. Yeah. It's awesome. I think it's well, great. I love how you do it kind of like I do, where when I'm going, like when I would go to Yorktown, I would look at what's around Yorktown to go and scout out because you're there and you, you have to spend the night. So you might as well do, you know, look for other stuff to do. And when you, um, I found out, you know, with Louisiana and back in March, it was like really cool how we did the gothic jail then we went to the the next morning to the cemetery or afternoon and then we went to the main spot and i loved how we were picking up different spots along the way and it's like yeah that that was really cool to me do you remember um when we were getting our 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 tickets for the tour they talked about the cemetery with the death the grave houses Yes. So I found one of them and they're fascinating. And I, I did a, I did some pictures and, and I think I did a video um, about the grave houses and I, I don't know, they're just really interesting. Puerto Rico has something similar in some of their cemeteries, but um, yeah, you can find my pictures and videos in the group on the public page. And of course I got a TikTok and an Instagram um, try to, you know, share pictures and videos so that if people want to learn about it and go on their own, then at least they have a little bit of an idea of what's out there. Right. And so if you're TikTok fans, it's real easy. Just look for Ghosts and Getaways and you'll be right to her page. Yeah. Yeah. I try to make it easy. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fast hour. Holy crap. <laughs> That was. I was like, I was looking at the, I had to do a double take looking at the clock and going, really? Wow. Good topic. So easy to talk yeah. about. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed it. That was a good hour. <laughs> yeah. And it was a lot of fun to hear about how your, you know, the thoughts that go into and how it's the people in the group that help determine where to go. And it's not you doing all the legwork and, research and going hey guys look what, who wants to go here that it's a group effort yeah yeah and for this group for this trip um our accommodations like i said it's got a couple of dinners and breakfast every morning all the tours all the transportation it was uh roughly like 2100 per person wow that was going to the forest i mean and i think we're going to visit five cities in that time period so, um, you know, similar, I looked at similar itineraries for other companies and they were charging quite a bit more, but, right. um, and they were also having like some of the paranormal celebrities. And I personally choose not to do that to yeah. keep it more affordable for us and to keep it smaller. I don't, I mean, I could do that and have 30 people, but mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I, I want to offer an alternative to people who don't want to do it that way. You know, well, you're a celebrity. <laughs> maybe in my own mind but <laughs> no I, I i i will admit i i went 
to Dylan because your name was on it. And I was like, oh, this is a ghost in getaways. Wow. You know, there's something, you know, what's going on over here? Because I was like, yeah, if Annette's over here, something's going on. And so that's what part of what drew me there. Oh, well, thanks. I mean, and we did have a great time, didn't we? So when you we went, did. you called me, I'm like, heck, y'all yeah, go with you. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I you know, it, international, of course, like I said, it's not cheap, but it's not, it doesn't have to be super expensive either. And I, I try to find that sweet spot <laughs> for everybody. Yeah. And we, we pay it out. It's like you have to pay it all at one time. People pay a deposit. You've got a year to pay it out. I mean, I make it as easy as I can. Well, that's convenient. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, thank you, Annette, for coming on the show. And I'm glad we got to promote mm -hmm. your Ghost and Getaways and you. And thank you, Michelle, for coming on and co-hosting. Thank you for having me. <laughs> And thank you to Catherine and everybody in the chat room. We appreciate you all watching and asking questions and commenting. So, um, Michelle, how about you send us out? Thank you for uh, having me on. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. And here we really enjoyed it. Thank you. And that's my part. Your turn, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was fast. <laughs> Oh, like I'm over here looking at trying to find something. I'm like, oh, that's already back on me. I don't know what I'm doing. I just put makeup on, sit here, and talk. That's my job. You handle all the other. <laughs> all right. Well, from all of us at the energy that surrounds us to all of you, wherever you are in the world watching, have a blessed night, a beautiful day, and a wonderful morning. Good night, everyone. Bye. You have just listened to the energy that surrounds us with your host, Michael Koff. Be sure to tune in next week for our next episode.